2017 Volvo V90 D4R design. Outstanding looks and competitively priced, but uncomfortable R design sports suspension erodes the appeal of the Volvo V90 R design. What is it? I know, I know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and all that. But come on. Just look at it. Allow yourself a moment to soak in the sight of the new Volvo V90 R design. To these eyes, at least, a truly spectacular piece of car design. Even better, as the sportiest of the V90 range, the new R design model gets more styling swagger with 15mm lower dried height, a gloss black grille and bumper finish, matte silver door mirrors and some sharp looking 18 in alloys. You also get part electric contour sports seats with leather and new buck upholstery, amongst other jazzed up interior bits. Those springs haven't just been shortened, they've been stiffened, too, and our design also gets different dampers to the rest of the range, passive monotub ones that deliver compression and rebound damping via a single valve. Adaptive dampers with rear air suspension can be added for £1,500 which replaces the Loward Sports suspension. What's it like? Our D4 test car, the more potent, four-wheel drive D5 model is also offered in our design trim, came without the adaptive suspension, which it turns out is an unfortunate emission. Well, unfortunate for us since we had a rather uncomfortable test drive. But fortunate for you, dear reader, as we can tell you without doubt that you should avoid the R design suspension. Sure, speed humps and other smooth edged intrusions are shrugged off easily, but hit a recessed drain cover or pothole under V90 shivers, thumps and heaves in a very uncouth and frankly on Volvo fashion. It does soak up higher frequency surface imperfections fairly well, and it's a fine motorway cruiser. But it's disappointing on B roads and in urban stuff, regardless of speed. The silver lining is that the stumpier springs have inevitably reduced the pitch and wallow that we noted up as a moderate criticism in the standard V90, and turn in feels a touch more incisive, too. Even so, the R design trim erodes the comfort of the standard V90, one of its most appealing attributes, without offering enough of a gain in handling precision in return. Not only that but those sports seats we mentioned? They're a bit of a step backwards for the V90, too, harder than the standard seats, and the pronounced, non-adjustable side bolsters could make things a bit uncomfortable for broader-figured drivers. Don't get the wrong end of the stick here, we still really like the V90. In fact, it's because we have so much affection for the standard V90 that the rather glaring flaws in the R design are so frustrating. The very essence of the V90's appeal is its unashamedly cushy ride and wonderful driver's position, both of which the R design compromises in the name of some sporting intent that it doesn't quite live up to. That doesn't mean it's without merit. Of course, it gets the same hearty yet progressive 2.0-liter diesel engine and smooth if slightly hesitant on step-off, 8-speed auto. More to the point, the styling upgrades do rather enhance the dashing visage and are sure to win it plenty of buyers, just as S-Line, AMG Line and M Sport trims are consistently big selling trims in the Volvo's Teutonic rivals. Our design also brings variable mood lighting inside, the excellent 12.3 in LED driver's display. Metal effect inlays, illuminated tread plates, sports pedals and LED fog lights with cornering function. It's not a bad price next to rivals like the Mercedes E-Class Estate AMG line, either. Even after you've added the air springs, it still undercuts the Merc by some £1,500 despite having a more comprehensive equipment spec. The Merc has a usefully bigger boot, mind which is no small matter in the biggest eight stakes, so it's very much a case of figuring out which of these worthy, plush wagons best suits your needs and wants. And that's before you've thrown in the added confusion of the imminent new BMW 5 Series Touring, 